Do you need a Magic Band when you come to Disney World? How about that fancy new Magic Band Plus? Well, if you are not sure, we're about to have way too much fun today answering that very question. Let's go do it. Hi ho everybody, this is Rob with Ear Scouts and we are here today to teach you everything there is to know about Magic Bands, Magic Mobile, the all new Magic Band Plus, and every other magical thing you can use to navigate your way around Walt Disney World. We are going to have an epic day today. We're gonna to go to all four parks plus a deluxe resort to show you everything you can do with these delightful little doodads. Did I technically need to book a room at a deluxe resort hotel just to show you that this guy can open the door? No, no I did not, but it certainly is a lot more fun that I did. We're about to enter Magic Kingdom, which is our very first park of the day, and that gives us a great opportunity to show you the most basic thing you can do with a Magic Band, enter a park. But do you need one of these to enter a park? Of course not. There are a ton of different ways you can use to enter the park, including one that is probably in your pocket right now. Option number one is to use one of these guys. This is a park ticket. These physical park tickets can be mailed to you when you purchase your tickets if you choose that option. Most of us though just get the e-ticket option. In that case, when you come to the parks, you'll need to go by guest relations either at the entrance to a park or at Disney Springs to pick these guys up. They don't charge you any extra for these, so they're free. Well sort of free you still have to pay all that money for the park ticket but they give you this little piece of plastic for free you could also sometimes get them from the cast member at the tap styles when you're entering a park but you really shouldn't count on that they don't always have these on hand and the worst thing in the world is to wait in a line only to be told you got to go wait in a different line option number two is for those folks who are staying at a disney world resort this is called a key to the world card you get this when you check in at the front desk this one's actually really old i got this one for a hotel stay over a year ago at coronado springs the new ones are very fancy and they have a 50th anniversary design on them but they're all basically doing the same thing which is opening your hotel room door and doing everything that a regular park ticket can do so once you've checked in at your resort, if you go to the front desk and you get one of these, you're all set. You could use this instead of a physical park ticket. You wouldn't need to go to guest relations anywhere or worry about getting one at a tap style. Option three is to use Magic Mobile. You can use that with any recent iPhone or Apple Watch. You can also use it on Android devices that can do the tap to pay feature with Google Pay. With the iPhone, you're gonna want the 10S or later. You can also get by with a 6S or later. You just won't be able to use the cool express mode tap feature we're gonna show you a little bit later in this video. Option number four is to use an old key card like the one I showed you here or an old park ticket from a previous trip to the park. Maybe you saved it as a souvenir from your adventure. Well, guess what? In most cases, you can still use that old key card or park ticket as long as it is still linked to your account. So to check if it's linked to your account, you just go into the My Disney Experience app, tap on Magic Bands and more. There's a section in there for card media, and it'll show you the numbers of the cards that you have linked to your account. If you look back here on the back, you'll see the card number. That's what you're gonna check to see if it is linked to the card number that appears in your app. If it is, you're probably good to go. You can probably just use this when you come to the parks. Option number five, of course, is to use one of the classic Magic Bands, and option number six is to use the fancy new Magic Band Plus. As we go through this video, you'll see this handy little grid that will be populating with all the different things that you can do with each of these options. That'll help you to pick the option that is best for you on your next trip to the park. We're also gonna be putting the new Magic Band Plus through the paces. We're gonna show you everything you can do with this latest and greatest device, and you can decide if it's worth the extra dough to upgrade. We're gonna start by using the iffiest method of them all. This is our old key to the world card from over a year ago. Will it still work to get us in the park? Let's find out. Hey, man, for a second there, I didn't think it was gonna work. That would have been embarrassing. 
Actually, what happened there, I had just put on sunscreen. This is a helpful tip, honestly, no matter what you're using to get into the park. If you put on sunscreen or lotion, or even if your hands are just kind of sweaty, sometimes the fingerprint reader will have a hard time reading your fingerprint. So if you decide to go the card route instead of using a magic band, you're gonna have to go through the trouble of pulling it out of your wallet or your pocket, but never fear. Disney has thought of everything and they are more than happy to sell you something that'll make using that card a little bit easier. Let's head into the Emporium and see what they got. So here at the Emporium right now, they have a selection of lanyards that you can use. These are handy for just keeping the card within easy reach around your neck. You can also use them to stick your pins if you wanna do pin trading while you're here in the park. Let's go take a look at the different magic bands they have in stock and we'll see what the pricing looks like right now. You can still get the old school magic bands. They are still for sale. They're also a little bit cheaper, but they don't have quite as large of an assortment in the shops as they used to, because obviously now they're given all that space to the new Magic Band Plus. The pricing is actually a little bit higher for the Magic Band Plus, as you would expect. You can get the original Magic Bands for as cheap as $19.99, but the Magic Band Plus, you're looking at $34.99 or $44.99 for those fancy limited edition ones. So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Rob, do I really need to spend more money on some fancy thing to carry a card? I can just pull that card out of my wallet when I need to enter the park, right? Well, yes and no. You're probably going to use this thing for a lot more than just entering the park. Also, if you're a parent or you're with a large group of people that you need to keep track of, you're going to have multiple of these cards. I have seen parents frazzled and flustered at the entrance to the park with like six and seven of these cards trying to figure out who goes to who. Trust me when I tell you, having everyone have their own little card around their neck makes things a lot easier if you go that route. So whether you go Magic Band or card, there are going to be a ton of different things you're gonna do with those. We're gonna show you all of them while we go around the parks today. The first one is one you're already familiar with. If you wanna play those Disney Genie slots, you wanna get in those lightning lanes, you're gonna need something to tap in at each and every ride. As luck would have it, I have a lightning lane all lined up right now over at Big Thunder Mountain. We're gonna use that really iffy method again. Can Goofy get us in? Hello. Ta-da. I knew I could count on Goofy. He got us in the lightning lane. Moral of the story, hold on to your old hotel key card. It's a great souvenir and it might turn out to be useful on your next trip to the parks. So now we know we can use our magic band or our magic cards to get into the park. We can use them to enter lightning lanes. It rides it off for lightning lanes. But what if you are staying at a Disney World Resort hotel? Well, then my friend, there is a whole host of other things you can do with these devices. We are gonna go back in time right now to three days ago when we were staying at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge and we're gonna tell you all about it. First off, let's start with our current magic band. And that worked beautifully. So now let's try our old magic band. It's an old magic band. Let's see if this works. We're gonna try our current park ticket, see if that works for us. Yeah, no dice with the park ticket. Let's try our old key to the world card. This is from a previous hotel stay. It is linked to our account in My Disney Experience. Let's see if that will open the door. Yeah, no dice with that one either. Last up, let's try Magic Mobile. We're gonna use Magic Mobile on our Apple Watch and see if that will open the door. And look at what happens. It turns green, but then it still doesn't open the door. So, your only options for getting into your room are a current Magic Band, an older Magic Band that you've used before, or of course your Key to the World card that they will give you if you don't have a Magic Band. 
We have traveled back through space and time and we are back at our epic park day. We have now made our way to Disney's Animal Kingdom. In addition to using your magic band or key to the world card to open your hotel room, you can also use it to pay for things. You can also use your park ticket. You can use Magic Mobile if it's properly set up on your Apple Watch or your iPhone. You can even use your old key to the world card. We tried Goofy and it did work to pay for things, but here's the catch. You can only pay for things with your cards or your Magic Band or Magic Mobile if you have an active Disney World Resort hotel stay. It's not actually charging this to the card you have on file in My Disney Experience. It's charging it to your hotel room. We are off to grab a late lunch, but I wanted to share one other thing that you can do with your Magic Band, Magic Mobile Park Ticket. This honestly works with all of the above, and that is you will use it to show that you are eligible for special events like early entry or extended evening hours. They will use your Magic Band or whatever it is that you're using to tap to make sure that you have an active hotel reservation that qualifies you for that special activity. So. Again, you can see the list just piles up for things that you're going to use this for. It's yet another reason you might want to consider getting a Magic Band. We're at my favorite quick service spot in all of the parks, not just in Animal Kingdom, in every single park. This is my favorite quick service, Satuli Canteen. While we are here at Satuli Canteen in the air conditioning, I want to talk a little bit about Magic Mobile because Magic Mobile is what we're going to be using while we are here in Animal Kingdom today. It is a great alternative to a Magic Band because you likely already have the equipment. The problem with it is it is definitely the buggiest alternative to Magic Band, especially when it first came out. It never worked like it should. I will say though, recently, every time I've tried to use Magic Mobile, it has worked correctly. If you want to set up Magic Mobile, all you got to do is open your compatible device, iPhone or Android, open up the My Disney Experience app, and then you tap in the main menu on Magic Mobile. What you're going to do is add this pass to your wallet app if you're on iPhone, or you're going to add it to Google Pay if you're on Android. The important thing though is you want to make sure you have express mode turned on. This is supposed to be turned on by default, but in my experience, it's not always turned on by default. What express mode means is that you don't have to activate the wallet for it to work. You can just tap your device the same way that you would a Magic Band and it just works. If you want to use your Apple Watch with this, you're going to go on your iPhone and open up that Apple Watch app. Go ahead and look for the wallet, tap on that, and make sure you see your Disney World Pass card in the wallet. Tap on it and make sure also that Express Mode is enabled there too. So it should be by default, but if it isn't, make sure it is. You'll now be able to just tap your Apple Watch just like a Magic Band. And that's what we're going to do right now, actually, because we are right on time for our next lightning lane over at Expedition Everest. Let's go find that Yeti. So while we're walking over to Asia, I want to talk about something else you can do with your Magic Band while you're here at Disney World, and that is take photos. Now, I don't mean that there is an actual camera on your Magic Band. That would be super cool. That would be an awesome feature for Magic Band Plus. No, it does not physically take photos, but it allows you to capture photos from photo pass photographers and from rides. When you get off of a lot of rides, there's often a bank of screens and you can see that they've taken your picture while you were on the ride. You would use your Magic Band, Magic Mobile, Card, what have you, all of the options work and you can use that to grab that picture. It'll be added to the My Disney Experience app. Now, if you want to access that picture, you do have to pay for the Memory Maker service. It's a different price depending on whether you're here with a regular park ticket or an annual pass. I'll throw those prices up here. I don't know them off the top of my head, but if you add Memory Maker, you can then use your Magic Band or your card or Magic Mobile to access photos from your vacation. And here we are. Let's see if Magic Mobile works to tap us into this lightning lane. Thank you. So the regular tap styles were not working today, but thankfully Magic Mobile was working today. We got in just fine.
<laughs> Do you see why that is my favorite ride in all of Disney World? Oh my gosh. When you go backwards and you get the tickles in your stomach, it is the best. The best. You know what else was the best? We used Magic Mobile on our Apple Watch to grab that ride photo. No hiccups at all. We've actually had no hiccups with Magic Mobile at all on this video. We used it to get into the parks. We used it for lightning lanes. We used it to grab photos. It did everything without issue. So I really do think they've come a long way and worked out all of those early bugs. The only things you cannot use Magic Mobile for, you can't use it to open your hotel room door. And of course, you can't use it for all of those fancy new Magic Band Plus features. And that is what the rest of this video is gonna be all about. We are off to Hollywood Studios and we are gonna show you everything you can do with this fancy new Magic Band Plus. So there are a lot of fun little perks that come with the new Magic Band Plus. There are also some gremlins you gotta deal with. It is brand new tech and it is full of bugs right now. We'll get to the gremlins and bugs later, but first let's focus on some of the fun. So right now, all around Walt Disney World, I'm sure you're already aware at this point, there are these amazing 50th anniversary statues. They're gold, they're beautiful. And up until very recently, all they really did was sit there looking beautiful, which to be fair, that's all we expect of most statues. But with the introduction of Magic Man Plus, these golden statues do a little something more. So when you approach one of these golden statues, your Magic Band Plus will illuminate or vibrate depending on your settings. Oh, it's happening right now. Can you see that? See the illumination and the vibration? Well, you can't see the vibration. I feel the vibration. So what's happening now? I've got a wave. I've got a wave of the statue that I'm approaching. Hey, Edna. Edna seems very nonplussed by our brand new fancy Magic Band Plus. She does not seem impressed, but she did play a little song for us. So the way this works, when you approach one of these 50th anniversary statues, your magic band will light up and vibrate. You're going to wave at the statue like this. I've seen a ton of people come up and they're sort of putting their hand out and they're putting their hand down here and they're doing this number or they're like trying to do all kinds of weird things, they're trying to find the sensor and just tap on it. No, none of those things will work. When your magic band lights up, it means that it has sensed that you are near a statue. It must be linked by Bluetooth to your phone for this to work. So if you approach statues all day and nothing's happening, make sure you are linked to your phone because it won't work otherwise. Once it knows you are near a statue, there is a motion sensor that is inside of this. It is listening for this motion and this motion only. And when it hears this motion, when that motion sensor gets triggered, that's when it sends whatever message it sends to make the statue come alive. That is the 50th anniversary statues. There are 36 of them around the park. And if you want to have an easy time tracking all the ones that you found, I have an app that you should download if you haven't already. It is the Play Disney app. It is free on the app store. This has a ton of games in it. Even if you don't have a Magic Band Plus, you should totally get this app because there are so many fun things to do with it. But with a Magic Band Plus, there are two games in particular that are exclusive to Magic Band Plus. The first game we're gonna check out in the Play Disney app is the Disney Fab 50 Quest. That is where you are gonna find all 36 of these statues. Once you wave at them, it will activate that statue in the app and then you get a cool unlockable augmented reality experience. I'm not gonna spoil that for you. You'll have to discover it yourself, but it's kind of cute, it's kind of fun. What's most fun though is tracking your progress in each of the parks and seeing how many statues you found. So that is the first game you can play, the Fab 50 Quest. The second game you can play and the one that we are here at Hollywood Studios to play is a very cool bounty hunter game. Bounty hunting gear, check. Compadre named Gremlin, check. We're all set to go round up some bad guys. Let's go play Batu Bounty Hunters. It is thundering and lightning. The heavens are about to open up on us right now. It is gonna be a monsoon. So I'm gonna tell you super fast how this game works. Basically, there are doors that are all around Galaxy's Edge, 
And behind those doors might be a bounty that you're hunting for. Some bad guy who's rubbed somebody the wrong way and you're there to go find him so that whoever's looking for him can pay him a visit. Let's just say that. He's gonna get paid a visit. So you start your bounty hunting mission by going to this particular portal right over here. So I've already collected one. Let's get our next assignment. Done. Ooh, that guy looks like a pretty rough dude. So how are we going to find Glaucus, AKA big guy? What we're going to do is we're going to follow our magic band and you see how right now it is glowing green. If it keeps glowing green, then that means we are walking in the right direction. But if it starts to glow red, oops, we are going the wrong way. We're back on the trail, back on the trail. So we're going to be looking for doors that are all around galaxy's edge. And our guy is going to be hiding behind one of those doors. Once we find him, we're going to use the Play Disney app. It has a scanner that will, it's like an augmented reality scanner that's going to let us see behind that door and we'll see if the guy we're hunting for is there. Looking good, looking good, looking good. Hey, it turned purple. That means we found him. I think our target is right behind this door. So all we need to do is use the augmented reality feature of the app. We wave it at the door, see if he shows up there. It's almost like an infrared scanner. And look, there he is, there he is. So we get a little bit closer, we tap on him and that reports his location to the guild. Now we go collect our reward. So basically to collect your reward, you go right next to where you collected the bounty to begin with. It's gonna read my magic band here. Very cool effect. Back so soon with your second bounty. Nice job, but can you find more? The wind is really picking up. There's lightning, there's thunder. I think we're about to have a downpour. We're gonna go try to beat this storm to our last park of the day. Let's head over to Epcot. Well, it seems like we have beaten the worst of the storm over here to our last park of the night. We are at Epcot to see Harmonious, the nighttime spectacular fireworks show that is here at Epcot. The reason we are checking out Harmonious in this video is because of the last major feature of Magic Band Plus, and that is that it coordinates with the nighttime shows here at Epcot and at Magic Kingdom. Spoiler alert, we already tried this over at Magic Kingdom. The results were a little underwhelming. Thankfully, the storm has passed. The sky looks spectacular right now as we are waiting for these fireworks. If you decide you're going to get a Magic Band Plus and you want to use it in the parks right away, you're definitely going to want to bring a battery charger with you. So this is the one that we use. I love this one because it has both a regular USB and a USB-C. You can charge two devices at once. It also fast charges your devices. We'll put a link to this one in the description down below if you're interested in picking it up. Uh, this one is by Anchor and we love it. We use it for every video and it's perfect for this because you can charge your Magic Band Plus with the regular USB while you charge your phone with this one. Easy peasy done. The other thing that you're going to need to be aware of as soon as you get that Magic Band, you have to update the software. And if the battery's not charged up enough, it won't let you update the software. So again, battery pack is a must if you want to use it on the first day. That's not really a gremlin. It's just, it's an electronic device. It doesn't come with a full charge. You're going to have to charge it in order to use it. Here are the gremlins though. So number one, these things don't always pick up this waving motion, which is key for one of the main things you use them for. You got to be able to wave at those statues and have them react. If this happens to you, you just need to go into the settings for the device. It's in Magic Bands and more inside your My Disney Experience app. You're going to tap on the settings for the Magic Band Plus, and there's going to be a toggle for increasing the motion sensitivity. You can toggle that on and off there. Definitely want that on. I think it does drain the battery a little bit more, but it makes it much better at recognizing that waving motion. It's just a lot less frustrating with that turned on. 
the battery does drain pretty quickly on these guys. The first one that we got, we had to return. They, they exchanged it for another one because it just wouldn't stay connected to the phone. The Bluetooth connection was really shaky. Also, the battery on that one would drain like that. So if you're having that experience where the battery drains really, really quickly, we're talking like in a matter of a couple hours and it's not holding a, a steady Bluetooth connection, that is a sign that you will need to exchange it and get a new one. Other gremlin that we've been getting a lot is our Magic Band doesn't recognize when we are close to one of the 50th anniversary statues. The quickest way to fix this is usually just to walk away from the statue, maybe try approaching from a different angle. Sometimes that fixes it. The other thing to check is to make sure that your Magic Band is still linked to your phone via Bluetooth. If it loses that Bluetooth connection, it's not going to work. That is key to making the Magic Band Plus do all of its magic goodness. It's got to stay linked up to your phone. You might want to try unlinking it and relinking it. That sometimes fixes issues, but for us, usually just walking away from the statue and then approaching it again, maybe from a different angle, usually fixes it. The other thing that we have heard from cast members is that as the battery gets low in level, it doesn't function at its full capacity. So if you find that you're having trouble recognizing the statues with your device, for example, it might be because the battery just needs to be topped off a little bit. You only need the battery to do those Magic Band Plus special features like interacting with the statues or doing the Bounty Hunter game over in Hollywood Studios. If you don't have a battery charge, you can still use your Magic Band Plus to do all the things that a regular Magic Band will do. Those are pretty much all of the major issues we've encountered so far. Hopefully all of these things can be updated, maybe even through a firmware update on the devices themselves. So time will tell. I do think having a Magic Band Plus will future proof you a little bit. There might be some really cool experiences right around the horizon and it would stink if you invested money in a regular Magic Band and then the next time you came to Disney World, you couldn't do any of that fun stuff without shelling out for a new one. So I think there is an argument to getting the Magic Band Plus just to future-proof yourself a bit. Well, we have staked out our spot here for the fireworks. We'll put this Magic Band Plus through the paces, see if it adds anything special to this harmonious show. It was definitely better than Enchantment. Do I think you should be looking at your wrist during Harmonious? No. The problem with this implementation is your Magic Band is constantly buzzing and vibrating during the show. It's, it's like your Magic Band is saying, look at me, look at me, I'm doing something. And you kind of want to be like, yes, that's nice, you're doing something, but I'm, I'm kind of watching a show right now. <laughs> One other thing that happened in the show tonight, I did not have this little guy attached. So this is something that you get when you're an annual pass holder. They don't give these out anymore, but they used to. And you can also order ones that are like this online. Uh, it kind of slides on. What's nice about this though, with the Magic Band Plus, it kind of keeps the Magic Band snapped together. The Magic Band Plus, unlike the older Magic Band, it's not as rubbery, it's not as flexible. And so what happened when I didn't have this guy on, it popped off. That has happened more than once. It is a real issue that you need to be aware of with these Magic Band Pluses. You'll need to invest in something like this. You can order them online. I'll try to find a link and I'll put it in the description down below for you guys. But you're going to need something like this to protect that investment because I have encountered people in the park who said that it popped off when they were on a ride and it was just gone. So uh, it is a problem with the new Magic Band Pluses that you didn't really have with the old Magic Bands. They, they just they're not as flexible. They're more rigid and they just tend to pop off more. Well, I hope this video has been helpful to you in deciding what you're going to use when you come to Walt Disney World to navigate the parks. We're going to throw that grid up again one last time so you can kind of see the breakdown of the features of each of the options available to you. Please let us know in the comments down below. If you've been to Disney World before, what do you use? If you're coming for the first time, what are you planning to use? 
Well, thank you guys so much for joining us on this epic adventure today. I hope you guys had fun. If you did, be sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell. Until next time, don't forget to think happy thoughts, everybody. We'll see you again real soon.